Number 33. Gastric juice, the digestive fluid produced in the stomach, contains hydrochloric acid, which is HCl. Milk of magnesia, a suspension of solid MgOH2 in an aqueous medium, is sometimes used to neutralize excess stomach acid. Write a complete balanced equation for the neutralization reaction and identify the conjugate acid base pairs. Okie dokie. All right, so they're saying that milk of magnesia, so we have this MgOH2, right, is used to neutralize the stomach acid and stomach acid is basically the acid that's produced in the stomach, aka gastric juice, and that's HCl. So we just have to come up with a balanced equation for what's going on when HCl, the gastric juice or the stomach acid, reacts with milk of magnesia, the MgOH2. Okie dokie. So let's go for it. We have HCl plus... MgOH2. And some reaction's going to happen. Okie dokie. So it looks like there are two compounds here, right? So when we think of two compounds reacting with each other, it doesn't matter whether it's a titration or a neutralization. Basically, this is just a double displacement reaction. So maybe I'll just write that here. Double displacement we learned this all the way back in the beginning of chem. Double displacement is when you have um, two compounds coming together. You just have to figure out where the break is, right? In HCl, the break between the ions is between the H and the Cl. And then for MgOH2, which is magnesium hydroxide, they're just calling it milk of magnesia, but it's magnesium hydroxide. Remember, hydroxide OH stays by itself. So the break has to be between Mg and the OH2. Now, when you're doing a double displacement, remember that little thing that we learned, you know, a while back. Outers go with outers. So the outer parts are going to hook up together to make a new compound. And the inners go with inners. So the Cl is going to hook up with the Mg. And these go together. And these are your two new components on the product side. doesn't matter which one you say first. I guess we'll do the outers first. So we have H coming together with OH. It does not matter that there's two of them. You're just taking the ions. H is always a plus one, right? It's in group one on the periodic table. And hydroxide is always a negative one. So maybe if, maybe if I just do plus one and minus one. Now... Remember, we crisscross the charges to find the compounds. So one and one, they just cancel out, right? So it'd just be basically H, O, H, but that's a little funny. We have two hydrogens and one oxygen, so this would basically be H, 2, O. So maybe I'll just write that here. H, 2, O. Cool. Plus, let's do the other one, right? Magnesium with the Cl. So we have Mg. Mg is in group 2, so that's a 2 plus charge. And Cl in group 17 or 7a is a negative 1. So remember, crisscross these down, 2 and 1. I have 1 magnesium and 2 chlorines. So this would just be Mg, Cl, 2. Okie dokie. Now, do we have to include states here? Uh, sure, right? They do say that milk of magnesia uh, is a suspension of solid magnesium hydroxide. So this MgOH2 is definitely a solid. And HCl, right? That's a, a fluid, right? Gastric juice. HCl is a strong acid. So that's one of your six strong acids. So all your strong acids and all your strong bases, especially if they're in, you know, um, solutions, they're going to be aqueous. Water, whenever water is produced and we're doing neutralizations, when we're doing acids and bases, this has to be, whoop, this has to be a liquid. So that means it doesn't break down. 
And then magnesium chloride, MgCl2, um, this also would be aqueous based off of the solubility rules. All right, so remember, halides are always soluble unless they are uh, bound with, I believe it's barium, lead, and mercury, right? Mercury is HG. Since magnesium is not one of these three, it would be aqueous. So that's just like a little side note. Okie dokie. Now, we can break this down to show the conjugate acid-base pairs, right? Remember, the acid, the strong acid, a Bronsted-Lowry acid is always going to donate 1H+, which basically means that 1H is going to get rid of it, right? And if this was the acid, this has to be the base. Now, magnesium hydroxide is not a strong base. It's classified as a weak base, but it's a base nonetheless. If we want, we could just put that, you know, these are Bronsted-Lowry's uh, acid and base. So maybe I'll just put BL and BL, Bronsted-BL, uh, Bronsted-Lowry. Okay. And now, basically, what we just have to figure out is which one is going to be the conjugate acid and which one is going to be the conjugate base because we need conjugate acid-base pairs. Well, the key here is that H2O is the solution, right? So what we would need to do is we would basically need to break this down to see what's going on here. I do see that I have an HCl, but all of a sudden the chlorine is now bound with magnesium. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to break this down into its ions again. So instead of saying MgCl2, remember with net ionic equations, you're just going to say them as their ions. So this would be magnesium, 2 plus, and that's aqueous, plus Cl minus, that's aqueous, right? But now you have two of them. So I do need to put the two in front of here. And because of that, I can now just substitute this for this. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to erase this. And this is now going right here. I can even maybe just scooch this over a little bit up top here. Okay, beautiful. Now we can identify one clear pair. Remember, acids always donate the hydrogen. So if this was the acid, HCl, that hydrogen should be dropped. And the conjugate is just the chlorine. And look on this side now. Oh, here it is. This is just the chlorine. So this was the Bronsted-Lowry acid, and the Cl was the conjugate base. Acid will always turn into conjugate bases, and then bases will turn into conjugate acids. But we just have to figure out which one is the conjugate acid. Now remember, a base will always accept the H plus that the acid gives to it. And look at who gained the hydrogen, right? It was OH. Don't worry about this too. The polyatomic was OH. It only had one hydrogen, right? One hydrogen here. But now when we added that H to it, and essentially, this is what's going on, right? I added 1H to the OH, and now I'm H2O. So the conjugate acid would be this guy. This is the conjugate acid because it was OH. The polyatomic was OH, and you gained one hydrogen. So that just has to be H2O. And let me just get rid of this. Now, you guys might be asking, well, what's going on with the magnesium, right? Technically, this magnesium is still part of the chlorine, right? So the MgCl2 that was here before, technically the whole thing is the conjugate base, if you just wanted to leave it as that. But I just wanted to give you guys context as to which one out of the two was really the basic component. And it's the chlorine out of the whole MgCl2. So... There you go.
Did I cover everything? The only thing that I am missing is we didn't balance it, <laughs> right? So remember, every time that you make a, you know, an equation, you just got to make sure that you balance it, right? I did add a two here, so I should kind of balance the chlorines. There's two chlorines here. HCl, I had to put a two here in front, right? Because now I have two CLs. And now let's see here. I have to double up on my OHs and my Hs, right? I had two OHs. I have two Hs. So technically two H and two OH, I should have two H2Os. So that would be like a good refresher just to remember how to balance. And this is now your final answer with the conjugate acid base pairs. Hopefully this makes sense. What do you think? This one was a little tricky, but I know you guys got this. Keep studying hard and I will see you all in later lessons. Okay. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.